So in this lesson, you talked about identities and identities mean that both sides are equivalent expressions of each other. Um, so you got a couple of options here on how you're going to figure this out. You might recognize that it's an identity that you talked about today. Um, otherwise, you can multiply one side out to see if it's an equivalent expression. So with um, this binomial cubed over here, remember that that means that you're going to be multiplying a binomial times itself three times. And in order for it to get to x cubed plus 8, the x squared and the x terms are going to have to cancel out. And nothing's going to cancel out in here because there's no subtraction. So when you start multiplying these together, so if I do x times x, I'm going to get x squared. So I'm just going to multiply these two together first. Then I would do x times 2, which is 2x, 2 times x, which is 2x, and then 2 times 2, which is 4. So that's going to be the first part, which we could combine some like terms here. But then this middle part is just going to combine to 4x. And it's not going to cancel out that x term because there was no minuses. And there's, again, no minuses here. So there's no way that we're going to get an equivalent expression to x cubed plus 8. So this is certainly not an identity. Um, so then if we look here, we have x to the 6th plus x. And then we can look over here. Um, and then we see x minus 1 times x to the 5th, x to the 4th, x to the 3rd, 2nd, um, and then x. And um, so this is like kind of similar to one you looked at um, in an identity in the lesson summary. So we are going to have some things that cancel out, but it's not going to equal out to this over here. So if we look at this, we can just distribute this x into all of these. So if I multiply these all by x, I'm going to get x to the 6th, x to the 5th, x to the 4th, x to the 3rd, and x squared because I multiplied them all by an x. Now when I multiply them all by a negative 1, I'm just going to get negative x to the 5th. So this will cancel. I'm going to get negative x to the 4th negative x to the third, negative x squared, and negative x. So this is going to be x to the sixth minus x, not plus x. So this is not an identity. Um, then in this next one, um, so let me erase. Well, I don't want to erase it. Let me just move some of this. Let me just move it over here um, for that one. So now in this next one, uh, when we look at this, okay, so again, we know that there's a minus here with pluses. So we do know that some things have a chance of canceling out. So we probably want to actually multiply this out to see if we get this. So when we distribute this x squared into each of these, so we're going to do x squared times each, each of these. So I'm going to get x to the sixth plus x to the fourth, plus x squared, when I multiply that into each of those terms. Then I'm going to multiply the negative 1 into each of them. So I'm going to do negative 1 times x to the fourth gives me negative x to the fourth. Negative 1 times x squared gives me negative x squared. And negative 1 times 1 gives me negative 1. Then I see that this will be 0 and this will be 0. So I'll be left with x to the 6th minus 1. So this is an equivalent expression to this. So this one is an identity. D kind of has the same idea of A that we can rule it out because this is a plus and so are all of these. So we don't have a bunch of terms that are going to cancel out here. Okay, and we know when we multiply, we're going to start getting bigger and bigger middle terms. So they're not going to stay these ones like this. So this is not going to be an identity. And again, you can multiply this out if you would like to, um, to prove it to yourself. So if I did that, um, when I multiplied, I would have four of these.
So if I go ahead and multiply one set together, so I've got x squared, 1x and 1x gives me a middle term of 2x, and then 1 times 1 gives me 1. So that's going to be the same thing here. So now I'm going to be multiplying these together, and you can imagine that this number in the middle is just going to keep getting bigger. So it's not going to go back to ones here because there's nothing to subtract off to bring us back down. So that is not going to be an identity. E, um, we have a plus here and we have some minuses here. So this one has a potential for some things to kind of cancel out and not just keep getting bigger. So let's multiply this. Um, and I've just been distributing these. Let me do this one in the box. So that in case you like multiplying in the box, you see that. Um, so it's going to be x plus 1 times x to the 4th minus x to the 3rd plus x squared minus x plus 1. So then we would multiply x times x to get x to the 5th, x times x x times negative x to get negative x to the fourth, x times x squared to get x to the third, x times negative x to get negative x squared, and then x times 1 to get 1x. So that's just me distributing the x to all of these terms like I have been. Then I'm going to distribute the 1 to each of these. So I get x to the fourth, negative x cubed, x squared, negative x and one. So now we'll see some like terms in here that we'll be able to combine. So x to the fourth and negative x to the fourth cancels. Negative x cubed and x cubed cancels. x squared and negative x squared cancels. And negative x and x cancels. So we're left to x to the fifth plus one when we multiply this out. And that's the same thing that they have here. So both of these sides are equal. Therefore, it's an identity. Then in this one, we see the same two factors with a minus and a plus. So we know that our middle terms are going to cancel out when we multiply. So we're going to get x to the sixth, which is x cubed times x cubed. And then negative 1 times 1 will give us negative 1 because the middle terms here are going to be positive x cubed and negative x cubed. So those like terms will total to zero. So then these two sides do equal each other. So this is also an identity. Number two is two times x plus one squared equal to two x squared 2x plus 2 squared and identity. Explain or show your reasoning. Um, so a couple different ways to do this. Again, you can expand both sides by actually multiplying. Um, but I'm just going to write this out um, into an equivalent expression by just writing this out twice since it's x plus 1 squared. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to do 2x plus 2 squared means that I'd have two of those. So now if I take a look at this, I see this common factor in here. So I'm actually just going to divide that out. And if I divide that out, I get x plus 1 for this. And then I still have a 2x plus 2 here. So you can kind of see that these aren't going to be um, equivalent expression. expression since we've got this part in common now. And then this part is different. So they're certainly not going to be equivalent. You could even take this a step further and factor the 2 out of here. So you'd get 2x plus 1. And then you'd have 2 times 2, which is 4. So you have this as 4 times x plus 1, x plus 1. So this side is actually double the size of this. So that's just one way you could show it's not an expression. Again, you could have actually multiplied out these binomials as well if you wanted. Number three, Maya's solving rational, this rational equation for x. What move do you think she would make first to solve for x? Explain your reasoning. So she's probably going to want to get um, rid of this fraction, uh, meaning she's going to not want this x underneath there anymore. So she's likely going to just multiply x to both sides, which 
can be thought of as cross multiplication so that this x cancels and we're just left with 5 times x equals 2 plus 7x. So probably going to multiply by x to both sides to cancel that denominator. Number four, for the values of 0 and negative 2, um, then we get this x to the fifth plus 32 and x plus 2 to the fifth. So we know that they're equal for these two values. So they say for the values of 0 and negative 2, this equals this. Does that mean that the equation is an identity? Explain your reasoning. So no, um, it just means that these two pieces, like if I graphed this and this, so if I thought of their graphs, it means that they would cross. So they cross at um, x equals 0 and x equals negative 2, but it doesn't mean um, that all the values are equal. It just means those two are equal. For number four, it says for the x values of 0 and negative 2, x to the fifth plus 32 is equal to x plus 2 to the fifth. Does this mean the equation is an identity? And remember, an, identi an identity means that the um, expressions need to be equal for all values of x. So this just shows that it's equal for 2. So this um, just tells us it's equal for 2 values, not all. So it doesn't guarantee that it's equal for all values, just 2. Number five, Claire finds an expression for S of R that gives the surface area in square inches of any cylindrical can with a fixed volume in terms of its radius in centimeters. Um, this is the graph Claire gets if she's allow, if she allows R to take on any value between negative 1.2 and 3. So remember, R represents the radius, so they're asking us what would be a better domain to use instead of negative 1.2 to 3. So a radius can't be a negative value, so it doesn't make sense for us to look at negative R values. So we would want to look at R values that are greater than 0. And then what's an approximate minimum value here for this graph? So we'd look here. And we'd see that that's at about um, 10 for the surface area. And remember, the surface area is in square inches. Number six, what values of x makes this true? So we're going to um, cross multiply. So multiply this x minus 3 up to the 3x plus 1. And then multiply the x up. So then we'll expand this out. So we're going to do x times 3x, which is 3x squared, x times 1, which is 1x, negative 3 times 3x, which is negative 9x, and then negative 3 times 1, which is negative 3, and then that's equal to x. So let's combine our like terms here. So x and negative 9x is negative 8x. Then we have an x squared, so we want to bring everything to the same side so that we can get it equal to zero and factor. So 3x squared minus 9x minus 3 equals zero. Um, then I see that each of these are divisible by 3, so I'm going to take out a common factor first to make things simpler. So when I take out a common factor of a 3, this is x squared minus 3x minus 1 equals zero. So now we're able to just look at this x squared minus 3x minus 1 portion and see if this is factorable. And so since we have an a value of 1 here, what are the factors of negative 1 that add to negative 3? There aren't. So we're going to be doing the quadratic formula, formula here. So opposite b plus or minus b squared, the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, this will give us our solutions. So um, 
our A value here is 1, our B value is negative 3, and our C value is negative 1. So let's go ahead and plug these in. So the opposite of negative 3 is positive 3, plus or minus B squared. So we're doing negative 3 squared, which is positive 9, minus 4 times 1 times negative 1 all over 2 times a, so 2 times 1 is 2. So then 3 plus or minus, and now we get 9, and then negative 4 times 1 is negative 4, negative 4 times negative 1 is plus 4. So this is going to be 9 plus 4 under here. So that's 3 plus or minus the square root of 13 over 2. 13 has no perfect square factors, so this doesn't simplify. So these would be your solutions to that equation. And so when we just want to check, do those make this denominator zero? And so we had three plus or minus the square root of 13 over two, which is a decimal. And zero makes this one a problem, and three makes this one a problem. Neither of those are, are these solutions. So the solutions to this would be 3 plus or minus square root 13 over 2.